Good morning. Let's pray. Father God, we give you praise and thanks for another day uh, to be here in your house, to be with your people, to be with you, Lord. We thank you for your spirit. We pray that it guides us this morning. Uh, we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Can we leave the scripture reading up? Thanks. So um, this morning we're going to continue in the book of Mark as we've been going through it the last few weeks, those of you who have been coming. If not, we're in the book of Mark. And um, the book of Mark, the early chapters, is kind of like the coming out party for Jesus. Did you guys notice that? It's like Jesus shows up and finally starts to uh, reveal who he is. He starts his, his earthly ministry. He starts um, preaching in the synagogues and healing people and casting out demons. And, and it's kind of like Jesus is, is showing the world, finally showing the world who he is. And that's a good thing for us because if we want to be Christians, if we want to be like Jesus, then we need to know how he was and how he acted, right? Um, so Jesus in this scripture is, is teaching us a lot uh, is teaching us a lot of lessons, not only a story about casting out demons and healing people, but um, several messages in it for us. So if we could read to get, well, I'll read it. You can follow along. Um, Mark chapter 1, um, verse 29. It says, as soon as they left the synagogue, we can stop there. So as soon as they left the synagogue, do you guys know that in order to leave someplace, you got to be someplace? Yeah? In order to leave someplace, you got to be someplace. Um, Jesus went to church. Can I get an amen? amen? Jesus went to church and he took his friends to church. And the disciples and Jesus spent time in the synagogues. So nowadays sometimes you hear, well, you know, I can be a Christian but I don't have to go to church. Which is actually false. Because you can be saved by the grace of Jesus through your faith in Christ. But you're not going to be very much like Christ unless you're going to church. So if you want to be like Christ, go to church. Jesus went to church, we should go to church. So thank you for coming this morning. Uh, it's a lot easier now that football season is over, yeah? <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for responding and, and doing what Jesus is teaching us to do, and that's to go to church. As they left the synagogue, because they were there, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. How many did you know that Peter was married? Yeah? Did you know that? Peter was married. And there's a few more times in Scripture where they talk about Peter's mother-in-law and his wife. So kind of cool that, that the disciples, one of, at least Peter was married, right? So that's cool. I'm married now, so I get to be proud of the fact that Peter's married. And the greatest disciple was married. Was that a coincidence? I don't know. She, he probably had a lot of help. He probably had a lot of help, yeah? Amen? Uh, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. She was sick. And immediately... Immediately, they told Jesus about her. When we have a problem, do we immediately go to Jesus? Or is he an afterthought? Yeah? When we need something, when, when we have a praise, uh, do we go to Jesus immediately? Or is he kind of an afterthought? Because Jesus doesn't want to be the last resort. Amen? Amen. He doesn't want you to try and figure out how to fix the problem on your own. And then when you can't, go to him for help. Right? He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to communicate with him. He wants to be the first thing on your mind, whether it's a praise, whether it's a problem, whether it's the beginning of your day or right before you go to sleep. He doesn't want to be an afterthought. He wants to be in the forefront of your mind at all times. Yeah. And that's what love is like. When you love someone, you always think about them. Yeah? You don't think about them after the fact. You think about them first. Right? And Jesus doesn't want to be an afterthought. Do we go to God with our problems when we have them, or do we try and fix them ourselves? I think a lot of times we try and fix them ourselves, yeah, from our own strength or what we believe to be our own strength. I can do this. I can fix this problem. I can fix my family, right? I can fix my job. I can fix my relationships. And sometimes the truth is we can't. Yeah, we need Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her took her hand and helped her up. Pretty cool, yeah? What did Jesus say to her? 
He didn't say anything to her. Jesus saw her and helped her out, right? Sometimes we, we have a lot of lip service, yeah? I think as the people of God, we do a lot of talking sometimes and not enough doing. And we see an example in Scripture where Jesus doesn't even say anything. He helps her, yeah? He acts. Jesus was a man of action, amen? Although he was the living word of God, right, the physical embodiment of the word of God, he wasn't just a talker. He was a doer, right? He was a doer. And Jesus goes to her, and he helps her up, and she's healed. And that's what we're called to do too, right? We're not called to just stand on the sidelines and talk about everybody's problems and even just pray for the people that have problems. We're called to get in the mix, yeah? Get in the mix. Help people up, right? Feed the poor. Don't pray for Jesus to feed the poor. Pray for Jesus to feed the poor, and then you feed the poor too, yeah? Heal the sick. Pray for them. Be with the widows. You know, all the things you hear in Scripture, it's not just lip service. It's doing. It's an action. This is an action novel, yeah? He picked her up, and she was healed. And immediately, the fever left her, and she what? She began to wait on them. Anybody been healed by Jesus, right? Maybe physically, maybe emotionally. All of us have been healed from sin by Jesus, amen? That's why he died on the cross, to heal us of our sins. We've all been healed by Jesus, and now we got to do something, right? Immediately after she was healed, she began to serve Jesus. You notice that? She got up and she waited on them. If Jesus has healed you, we're now called to serve Jesus, yeah? <clears throat> she began uh, to wait on them. She responded to being healed by Jesus with service. The healing power and love of God should prompt us into action, right? That's why there's a book called Acts in your Bible, in our Bible. Because Jesus prompted people to and motivated people and they began to actually live out the words that he was teaching them. Yeah, God is a man of action and we should be as well. Um, that evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick. Um, how many of you know that that's what we're called to do, right? That we're called to bring people to Jesus. That's our only job in life, right? To bring people to Jesus, people that are sick, people that need Jesus. It says in the evening after the sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick. Is that what we're doing? Are we bringing people to Jesus? That's our mission in life, is to bring people closer to Jesus. You know the story where the two friends had a paralyzed friend, and they couldn't get inside the house where Jesus was teaching. So what did they do? They, they dug a hole in the roof, and they lowered their friend down because they knew they had to get him close enough to Jesus. Not only so he could be healed, but so his sins could be forgiven. And our job is the same still. Are we bringing people to Jesus? Yeah? Are we constantly bringing people where they can experience the love of Christ, taking them to church, you know, taking them to Bible study, going to visit them in their houses, praying with them? Are we bringing Jesus to a world that needs him? Because we should. Amen? Amen? The people, the believers brought everyone who needed healing. Sometimes, uh, sometimes don't we only... Uh, Care for those we know. Yeah, because the scripture says they brought all the people. Yeah, they brought anybody that, that was having a hard time. Anybody that needed healing, they brought to Jesus. Sometimes, man, I pray for my friends. Yeah, and I pray for my family. And I pray for the people that I like because I hang out with them. But am I praying for the people that I might not like? Yeah, are we the type of followers that are bringing everybody who's in need closer to Jesus, not just the people that we care so desperately about. Because Jesus cares for all of us the same, yeah? Are we bringing people to Jesus? That's the question. It's not our place um, to heal the world. Did you know that? It's not our place to heal the world. We bring people to Jesus, and Jesus heals them, yeah? I'm not saying don't pray for people for healing. Of course you should. But it's not us that heals people. It's only Jesus that heals people. We got to get them closer to him. We got to get them closer to him. They brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. 
and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. It's kind of weird, right? But the thing is that Jesus' uh, life, his timeline was a very specific timeline. Everything he did was in exact alignment with the prophecies from the Old Testament, right? If Jesus just came out all of a sudden and said, here I am, I'm the Messiah, they might have crucified him early, and the prophecies wouldn't have been fulfilled, and he wouldn't have been the Messiah, right? So that's why he's not necessarily just going around letting everybody know that he is, he is the Messiah, right? It's a timeline, a prophetic timeline that he has to follow. So that's why that's in there. Um, many prophecies had to still come to pass. So he wouldn't let the demon speak. Jesus, and then we skip down to the next verse. Jesus prays in a solitary place. Um, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Prayer is not always comfortable. Amen? Prayer is not always comfortable. I mean, fasting's not fun, right? Prayer is not always comfortable. When Jesus was in the garden and he was praying to his father and sweating drops of blood, I'm sure it wasn't the most comfortable feeling. Getting up in the morning when the sun is still down, I mean, trust me, I work, I work on a boat. So I know it's hard to get up in the morning when the sun is still down and give your first fruits to God, right? It's hard to do that. But prayer is not always designed to be comfortable, right? Jesus wants to know that you're in it for real. And sometimes being in it for real requires a little show of effort, yeah? And Jesus got up in the morning when everybody was still sleeping. He found a place by himself where he could have fellowship with the Father, and he prayed. If we don't have fellowship with the Father while we're by ourselves, that's a problem, yeah? If we're only loving Jesus here, that's a problem. We need to have that quality time, that quality time with the Father, because Jesus did, yeah? So he went out when it was still dark. He found a place, and, and he prayed. Um, prayer is not always comfortable, but it's, it's what we should be doing, right? Um, Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Amen. Right? That, okay, Peter, you're doing a good job, right? The, you guys are doing a good job. Jesus, there's this buzz around town about you, and everybody wants to find you to see who you are. That's how it's supposed to be. As the people of God, we're supposed to create this buzz about Jesus Christ and his love that people want to find out who he is for themselves. And people that already know who he is, they still want to come and find out more about him, right? So the scripture says, they found him and they exclaimed, everyone's looking for you. That's a good thing. We want to be in that season too, right? Where we've created such a climate with the love of Christ that people are actively pursuing Jesus, trying to find him, searching him out. Crowds so big that they got to dig holes through the roof just to get to him. Yeah? That's the season we want to be in. And the only way we are going to be like that is, that if, af, is if we actually live the words in Jesus' book. Amen? Jesus replied, let's go elsewhere. Spread the word more. To nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. Jesus says, let's go. This is why I've come. The love and the word of God need to be shared with everybody else, right? Jesus actually commissions us to do exactly what he's, he did in the scripture, right? To go out and create more disciples. If you turn to Mark chapter 16, it's just a few pages away from where we're at. 16. Verse 15, I think. It's, and this is in red. It says, And then he told them, Go into the world and preach the good news to everyone. Right? Jesus is setting an example in the scripture. And then later on in the same book, he tells us to go into the world and, and make disciples. And in Matthew chapter 28, 15, it's actually the Great Commission where Jesus tells us to go out and make disciples and preach to the lost world because they need Jesus. Right? Um, 
So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. I have six points from this scripture for us to take uh, this morning, and then we'll close, okay? Number one, we got to go to church. Amen? Amen. You got to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, true, and you got to have fellowship with the body. Go to church, please. Thank you for coming. (laughs) Bring your kids to Tuesday night youth group starts at 630. They need to go to church too. So point number one, go to church, fellowship. Point number two, go to God with our problems and our praise. First, pray. God wants to be in the forefront of our minds and in our hearts. He's not a, he's not a last resort God. Yeah? He's, he wants to be the first thing we think about. So go to God with our problems and with our praise. Um, number three, act. Move. Right? Like Jesus went and helped Simon's mother-in-law up. We got to move. We got to act. We got to be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word, not just readers of the word, not just speakers of the word. We got to be doers of the word. That's the only way things are going to change. Yeah? Um, today is our 172nd anniversary. This church was birthed during a season of great revival in Hawaii. You know why? Because people were doing the word of Christ. Right? This, at the time, kingdom, this place that we live in, Hawaii, was almost 100% Christian because people live the word of God. Yeah? And it's become less and less Christian from 172 years ago because we start talking about it more and we stop doing it. Yeah. So point number three, move, act, do something. Number four, respond to Jesus' healing by serving. If you've been touched by God, if, if you know your sins are forgiven, respond to that healing with service. Amen? Number five, make time for God. Make time for God in the early morning uh, you know, he doesn't want to just take your leftovers, right? Your scrap time. Like, okay, now I'm not doing anything, so maybe now I'll read my Bible, right? Sports center's not on, so maybe now I'll pray. Yeah, he doesn't want the scraps. Make time for God. If we're too busy for God, we're too busy, right? Busy, I heard someone say, busy is, is burdened under Satan's yoke, yeah? If you're too busy for God, get on busy. Take a vacation. Pray. Make time for the Lord. Quality time for the Lord. Um, and finally, spread the gospel. Amen? Spread the gospel. We're all only here because somebody spread the gospel to us. Right? We're all only in, sitting in these pews today because somebody invited us once upon a time or maybe it was today. We're only here because the gospel was spread to us. Right? We live in the most isolated island chain in the world, and we know Jesus because people spread the gospel. We're not anywhere near the Middle East. We, I've never seen Jerusalem, right? But I know who Jesus is because people spread the gospel. So five points. Go to church. Go to God with your problems. Do something. Respond to Jesus' is healing by serving. Make time for God and spread the gospel. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you once again for this day. Uh, we, thank for, for your, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives in this place for almost 200 years, Lord. I uh, pray that you would continue to be with us, uh, continue to guide us, continue to help us do all the things we heard about this morning, Lord. We love you.